Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is life and good. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Upon us, Christ have mercy upon 
Grant, O Lord, that in all our sufferings here upon earth, for the testimony of the truth, we may steadfastly look up to heaven. By faith behold the glory that shall be revealed, and being filled with the Holy Ghost, may learn to love and bless our persecutors by the example of thy first martyr, St. Stephen, who prayed for his murderers to thee, O blessed Jesus, who standest at the right hand of God to succor all those who suffer for thee, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and is at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson for the epistle is written in the seventh chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 55th verse. Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Here ended the lesson. Thanks be to God. Six.
and with thy spirit. Holy Gospel is written in the 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 34th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city. And upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, the altar looks just as good in red in Christmas time as it does in white. Both are beautiful colors. This, of course, red for our first martyr, Stephen the Deacon, who we celebrate today on the day after Christmas. A few brief announcements. Only know this. Our ACW's Christmas no bake, bake, no, no bake sale was a smashing success last week and did very well. All the food went true, gone. There are some other items down there, it's a beautiful tree skirt and a couple of uh, chimney uh, stockings, a beautiful set. Also some, some other things to sell. If you wish to come down and make a sale, just see me or E.T. about it, RACW is funded by this uh, or we'll have a live auction in another week or so. Adult class, of course, is between the services at 9.15. Downstairs is our children's Bible studies take place upstairs. Now it is year end right now. If you have any donations you wish to make credited for this year, 2021, please get them in today. Otherwise they'll just go into next year's deposits and next year's record. So it's up to you. Just note that that's it. The offices will be closed this week though we will be coming and stopping in and making sure our mail is picked up or things done, but otherwise not. 
we will have a, uh, a service of even song on Wednesday evening, 5.30, uh, December 29th. We will be here for that service, but otherwise the office is not open. Little break. Thank you both. Now, as of next Sunday, parking is prohibited behind our church. This is not our parking lot, as you probably know. The uh, Bidwell Chapel has had it, and they've been nice enough to say it's yours evenings and weekends. Uh, otherwise, they rent out spaces there. Uh, they uh, are now sold. That place, the chapel is no longer the chapel, and the parking lot is no longer theirs. It's all gone to Music Connection, which is a music store that has seven day a week business, both customers buying uh, musical instruments and also uh, people getting musical instruction. So they're going to be using that. Uh, they want full use of that parking area. And they're right, and they aren't uh, leasing out spaces or anything. Now, we're fortunate to have lots of parking all around us. So you just have to go where you're supposed to go next door in the parking lot there. On Sundays and evenings, I believe all this parking around is free. And Saturdays too. And Saturdays too. Yeah. So we don't have to, you don't have to get a ticket. You can just go ahead and park there. If you come here in the weekdays, so though, you'll need to pay for that. Uh, it's a dollar an hour. I try to go to Berkeley for a dollar an hour but, uh, or San Francisco. But at any rate, we, uh, we're in the new world. We're no longer using this, this um, parking back here. If there is some leniency or some ability to use that in part, uh, I'll let you know. Right now, they've asked us to vacate as of the start of the year. So we will do that. And we wish Music uh, Express a, a great business here in downtown. It's a good thing to have here. All right. We're going to sing now 220, Sons of the Prophets.
Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Can you remember a moment when God showed himself to you? What was the incident? How did you know it was he? Where did it happen? Was it a vision? Was it a voice? Or a miracle? Was it impression? Did you somehow just know it? When did God reveal himself to you? And how did that make you feel? Did you sense it was the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit? Well, why do you think he did that? How often have you sensed him since that day? We enter Stephen's life almost at its end. He was chosen by the apostles. Peter was frustrated by the high demands of the new church. Some claimed he and the other apostles were neglecting Greek-speaking widows. Peter saw 3,000 people come to Christ in one single day, and that number grew each and every week. It was a logistical nightmare to even hold meetings. Their success had come down to the attention, had come to the attention of temple and government officials who were now seeking ways to stop this renegade bunch of Galileans. So Peter called a council and said the apostle's job was just to preach and to lead, not tend to every single issue and supply the needs of few. Others should be appointed to visit the sick and the hungry, people who were dispossessed by their families, who now create considered them to be dead. Seven men were chosen as deacons, meaning servants. All spoke Greek, all had lived abroad, and could relate quite well to the foreign-born members of the way. Stephen, among them, from that day on, distinguished himself, bringing many to Christ a firebrand, a passionate speaker, and a thorn in the side of the rulers. Miracles were attributed to him, and crowds formed wherever he went. At one engagement, he was arrested and brought before the tribunal that had convicted Jesus, that had admonished Peter and John after healing the lame beggar. A high priest in Sanhedrin now faced this young fanatic they brought their accusations against him, and they asked him to speak for himself. Stephen regarded his audience and spoke as he would before a crowd on the street. Men, brothers, fathers, hear me. He told the whole Jewish national story. He got their attention, confirmed faith in the Jewish belief, gave credence to them all, and then, he led them to the cross. But your hearts are hard and ears shut to me, he said. You're always fighting the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so now you do also. Which of the prophets was not cruelly attacked by your fathers? They put to death anyone who gave news of the coming righteous one, the one you gave up and put to death you who were given the law by angels, and you have never kept it. Well, this sudden rebuke snapped the elders out of their reverie, and their anger simply boiled over. This angelic young man looked skyward then, and he saw his vision. What Stephen, Stephen saw at that moment made the rest of his brief life more remarkable. Filled with God's spirit, he saw the roof of the Sanhedrin open out and heaven displayed above him with a brilliant light of God's approval. And there was Jesus seated at the Father's right hand. It transfixed Stephen. He told the priests, who had never seen any vision of their own themselves, I see heaven open and the Son of Man at the right hand of God. Well, this sealed his fate. The proceedings at an end, they raged at him picked him off his feet and carried him to a pit. And there these fine leaders of Israel took rocks and hurled them at his head. 
His last words were, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The vision prepared Stephen for heaven and led him to pray forgiveness for his executioners. So when did you first become aware of God? Obviously, Stephen knew him from experience. This was not his first vision. God had touched him, moved him, spoken to him and through him. His beatific vision was extraordinary. But now remember, remember your own experience. My father had a waking vision of Jesus in his younger life. I've known other people with the same or similar blessing. I was convinced of God's reality when freezing in an open fishing dinghy at dawn on Lake Mead one morning. I was at the age of seven. Wind cut across that huge expanse, setting up a chop, and the little motorboat kicked spray and soaked us all. I wasn't dressed warm enough, and it occurred to me to pray that God, if he heard my silent request, would just simply stop the wind. And the wind ceased at that next second, turning the hundred of square miles of Lake Mead into a sheet of glass. God is real. You know it, so do I. Where there is no vision, the people perish, said Solomon. A population without the knowledge of God is doomed. People see visions, examples of God's power or hear him. It happens whether it's a burning bush or a ladder running with angels or a still small voice or a fiery chariot or a pillar of cloud or a sapphire throne and four winged creatures with eyes and faces, visions of heads of heavens, visions of heaven's throne room might be rare, but he does show himself in so many ways, doesn't he? After the fall of the Soviet Union, in the vacuum of authority that left people aimless and hopeless, the emancipated Russians called people of faith to come over and to teach them morals and religious truth to their children, to everyone. In 1994, two Americans answered this call, and they taught Jesus in public schools, prisons, businesses, police and fire departments, and one large orphanage where a hundred children, abandoned by destitute mothers and fathers, heard the story of Jesus. It was nearing Christmas, and these ambassadors told of Christ's nativity. Mary and Joseph came to Bethlehem and found no room in the inn. Jesus was born and placed in a manger, a familiar story to us all. But to these orphans, it was the very first time they had ever heard the wonder of God's son having been born on earth. The staff then gave each child a little cardboard, a yellow napkin, a scrap of white flannel, some tan colored felt, and instructions on how to make a manger of their own. Each orphan tore the napkins into straw, folded the cardboard into little manger boxes, and placed a felt baby wrapped in a flannel blanket snugly inside. One American reported, all went well until I got to the table where little Misha sat. He was about six years old and had finished his project. I looked down at the little boy's manger, but was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. I called a translator to ask the boy why there were two babies. Crossing his arms in front of him and staring at his manger, the child began to repeat the story of baby Jesus very, very seriously. For such a young boy who had only heard this Christmas story once, he related it accurately until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. Misha had now made up his own ending. And when Maria laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I had no mama, and I have no papa, so I don't have any place to stay. Jesus told me, 
I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. I thought maybe if I kept him warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked Jesus, if I keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? Jesus told the little Russian, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got into the manger and Jesus looked at me and he told me I could stay with him for always. Little Misha's eyes cascaded with tears and he laid his head on the table and sobbed, his little shoulders shaking. But he was overcome with joy. In his six years, he had so valued warmth, but never had he found anyone who would not abandon or abuse him, but would stay with him for always. St. Stephen saw Jesus seated at the right hand of God on high. Little Misha saw Jesus lying in a manger and speaking comfort to his heart. I had the wind over Lake Mead stop from my silent prayer. I wonder what your story is and how God touched you and made you to know. I am here. I love you. I have always known you. You are mine. You can cry. You can laugh as well. It's all right now. I'll never leave you or reject you. Stay with me. I'm with you for always. At the stoning of Stephen, another young man, who'd also come from Greek lands like Stephen, who was also a zealot, brilliant, and faith-driven, stood by holding the cloaks for the Sanhedrin judge executioners as they hurled stones to kill the first Christian martyr. Saul approved of it, but his moment was not far off, a few months or years. And this young man would breathe his hatred of these heretics lead an arrest team to Damascus to bring Christians back in chains. But he was confronted by the glory of God and heard the voice of one saying, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Why do you so oppose me? I have a different life for you to lead. I'm calling you, Saul, to be an ambassador for me to the Gentiles. What Stephen saw and what Paul saw, you see too. It's like stars during the daytime. We know they are there. Look up. Oh, the blue sky obscures the vision during the day, but the stars are there anyway. God is there anyway. God is speaking anyway. God is real anyway. So now how did he first show himself to you? How is he showing himself to you right now? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
The blessed sacrament is offered this day in the name of God. Please remember in your prayers the sick, the aged, the suffering of our fellow parishioners, our families, and friends. You're praying especially for Anne, also for Bishop Scott and his wife Linda, and their deacon Ben, who all have COVID, and uh, we pray for them to return to full service and full health very soon. They are getting through it okay, so continue your prayers for them. Also for Tracy, Estelle, Donna, John, Joy, Frank, Sarah, Suzanne, Patty, Laura, Craig, Justin, Carol, David, Amir, Dennis, and for Frederick and John, our archbishops. We pray as well for the dying here, especially for Lise, for Hugh and James, and for the lost, for all atheists and prodigals, for James and Heather, for Natalie, Joshua, Mark, Christina, Liz, Pete, Cheryl, Katie, Heidi, Bijan, Heather, James, Iraj, Megan, Gary, Holly, Scott, James, and all cherished to turn back from the dark purpose of the light of God in Christ. We pray for God's guidance for John and his family, for Spencer and Eric, Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, Andrew, Angela, and for Derek, and special intentions for the young Robin. Robert, for Jamal and his family, for Randy and his family, for Mooney, Jolie, for Thomas, for our Gogi's Gogi Cafe here at the Korean and Sovereign Joy Churches here in our building with us, God's blessing. For the fire, police, EMS, and dispatch workers that they may serve honorably and be honored in their profession and safely return home every day. Pray for America's return to Christ, for our Iran mission, for the Women's Resource Clinic for COVID-19 recovery throughout the world. And for the continuation of this recovery rain season we're in, certainly good rain to the present, we're very thankful for it. We pray it will continue on and off, mildly filling all the reservoirs and the groundwater reserve as needed so that this greatest drought. For, the, for uh, all of God's purposes done in us, through us, as he grows. Pray also for those in our service, especially Ed Gavin, Douglas, and Reese. For all travelers, because many travel at this time of year and are gone from their homes and need to get home well. It's weather related. We've got to see everybody home safely. We pray for those in our, uh, we pray for our children, in here, especially St. Augustine, that of the Prophets of Christ the King. And uh, in the birthday party, Layla is uh, having a birthday this week. Any other birthdays? Okay, from Layla, watch over thy child. The Lord is her days increase, blessing guidance. Wherever she may be, keeping her unspotted from the world, strengthen her when she stands, comfort her with the spirit of sorrowful. Raise her up that she will be she fall, and in her heart, may that peace which passes all understanding find all the days of her life through Jesus Christ. Oh, amen. Here are those Christian marriage, other any anniversaries in the end of it. Give thanksgiving today for St. Stephen, our first Christian martyr, for whom the color red is appropriate, and whom we honor. Uh, it is typical through the years when uh, it's a midweek service that Deacon Faith takes the service alone because he was a deacon. The deacon's mass can be celebrated. But since it's a Sunday, I got to be here, and that's why I'm happy to celebrate this mass for St. Stephen and honor all deacons, especially. And our deacon, by the way, Deacon Jackson's right here and his wife, Betty. So we honor you too. Thank you for your years of service. Yeah. And we're very thankful for the rain. We've had some good rain and we want some more. So we keep praying for it. But we're grateful for what's come so far and continue. Uh, and I pray that we don't have any problems with the freezing temperatures that are on the way. Uh, the vet content from ice and slippery accidents or frozen and burst things or any of that stuff is super cold dust. So we pray for these things, we pray for the city of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer to thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who do confess thy holy name 
may I agree in the truth of thy, thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, our Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, and Donald and Scott, our bishops, and other ministers, especially Brian and David, the deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God. Devoutly be it. Almighty God. Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge that you will our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, for the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy and promise to give us of sin to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith for not have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all who should return to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the hand of all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. All Lord be with you, Amen. and with thy spirit. Lift up your of the Virgin Mary, his mother, 
and that without spot of sin to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, with the thou thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself, one suffer, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless, and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, Humbly beseeching you, that we and all of us who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with a sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. 
To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound of duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end, Amen. Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Nevertheless, we beseech thee, O Lord, all evils, past, present, and to come, and of the intercession of the blessed, glorious, and ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and that of the blessed apostles, Peter, and Paul, and Andrew, and all thy saints, Favor, we grant peace in our time, that by the help of thy mercy, we may be ever kept free from sin and saved from all disquietude. For the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. presume to come to this thy table, a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose poverty is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore well in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. 
but speak the word only in my soul shall you hear. Lord, I'm not worthy of conscience from under my roof. But speak the word only in my soul shall you hear. Lord, I am not worthy of conscience from under my roof. But speak the word only in my soul shall you Receive the sacrament in any form that is comfortable to you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for the doubt it's about safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. 
and just assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom and thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries which we have received come to our aid, O Lord. And at the intercession of the blessed Stephen, the martyr, be our strength and everlasting protection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Thanks be to God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the God and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Almighty Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 30.
and the power of our Lord. But as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be troubled by his examples. Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Hi, Jane. Okay. 